I wonder if you guys, do you guys have, uh, I think it's Jonathan McReynolds' uh, CD or a project. Or I, I don't know. Do y'all call them CDs anymore? I don't think people call them CDs anymore. You may call them projects. I hear I hear artists call them projects now. Hey, Nicole, um, I, w I cannot get off of that CD. And, and um, yesterday I was listening to it. And I was listening to um, the song that's called Cycles. Um, and those of you who are HCM, you know we did a year, I think it was 2016, uh, Breaking Cycles, Cycle Breaker year. And, um, and so it's amazing because at the end of the song, at the end of the song, when, it's, when, it's, when he's finished singing, you'll hear a man's voice go, wow. And I and that that just that just moved me. I think I'm gonna do a I think I'm gonna do a sermon series on on the word wow. Just because of that that man just spontaneously after hearing and being ministered by the, to that by that song cycles, he just said wow wow. And that, every time I hear that song and I hear that gentleman's voice uh, say wow, it it just it just blows. Me. Hey Bree, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, you just listen to that song and listen to the end of it, and you'll, you'll hear this man's voice go, "Wow, wow, yeah, I love that song too." It just um, it, it'll it'll mess you up. It'll it'll change your life. Amen. Bless you guys. Hey Norman, good morning. Hey, hey, um, Michi is um, on Wake Up with the Word next week. Michi is work, working on Wake Up with the Word next week, and so I am going to be doing uh, um, some discussions, some online discussions on the book Cover Her next week. I'm not sure what time I'm going to do it yet, probably sometime in the afternoon or something like that, but um, I'll get back with you because I, I really want to hear uh, and kind of share with you guys my heart about uh, this whole concept of a man's role to cover the, the women in his life and women's roles to women's um, responsibility to make sure that you are covered. And so we're going to talk about that next week. And so Michi is doing Wake Up With The Word. I'll be here, but Michi will be conducting Wake Up With The Word next week. And um, and I'm going to, so I'm going to be doing this sometime during the day. And you'll be able to, if, you, if, you're, if you're at work or whatever, you'll be able to hear the replay. But I want to talk to, especially my brothers, and help you understand that every time you um, are in the presence of a young lady, any woman that your responsibility is to cover her. It may be just for a second while you're opening the door for her, or it may be an hour or two while you're dating, going out on a date with her, or it may be in a relationship, a friendship, a romantic relationship, or in marriage. Your responsibility is to cover her. And sometimes I think we males, notice I say males, lose perspective on what what our role is in every situation that we're in. We're in we're in the we're in a place to cover, to be an umbrella, to to make sure no rain gets on the women of God. The the crescendo of God's creation is the woman. And um and God gave us a responsibility to, to cover you emotionally, spiritually, uh, physically to to make sure that everyone he gave us more strength so that we would use that strength to protect not to harm and um, sometimes we've lost lost perspective on that so I want to help you get that all right let's go to Esther chapter number four first verse fourteen is where we'll be today um, for if you remain silent this is where, this is Mordecai speaking to Queen Esther. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. Hear, hear that, that Mordecai is telling Esther, if you miss the moment that God has prepared for you, the Jews will find deliverance. God will give deliverance to the Jews from some other place, but you and your family will will perish. And who knows but that you have come into this royal position. Who knows if God has set aside this time and this space for such a time as this. This morning, brothers and sisters, we're going to talk about the sixth way, the sixth way that God speaks to us is through this thing called promptings. 
You see, there are two words in the New Testament scripture uh, for time. The, the first word is the word chronos, and it refers to the clock or, or the calendar time. It's where we get the English word chronology or uh, chronos, my brothers and sisters, is sequential time, past, present, future. It is linear. It's moving only in one direction. Yet the second word is what we want to talk about today. It's not chronos. It's not chronological order. It's not uh, minute by minute. It's not that every minute of every day is equal. No, it's the word keros, uh, K-A-I-R-O-S. It refers to opportunity. It, return, it refers to an opportune time. Chronos is quantitative. Here it is. This is what Pastor Mark Madison says. But, but Kairos is, and uh, Chronos is count, counted in minutes, yet Kairos is, is qualitative. If, if Chronos is qua quantitative, Kairos is qualitative. It, it captures moments. It's, it's the critical moment, check this out, at, or appointed time that God himself delivers to you and you must take advantage of it or it's over. It is what the uh, the Latin word carpe diem sees the day. Um, time management is chronos, and it is important that we that we should look and capitalize on the chronological time that is afforded to each of us every day. The psalmist even says to us to number our days, and 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 so that our hearts are turned to wisdom. That that Vince Lombardi, the the legendary coach of the Green Bay Packers, said that if you are uh, 15 minutes early, you are already late. But but here's what I want you to catch. The Apostle Paul took the idea uh, and turned it on its on its table one step further when he says, redeem the time. That's that some of us spend time and some of us even invest time. But a lot of us, especially those of us in the in the kingdom of God, we don't redeem time. We don't we don't squeeze time uh, as God has given us to give us back time that that the chronological time says is over. It's not chronos. It's it's carols. It's it's the it literally means making the most of every opportunity. That's that's amazing for us, brothers and sisters. Chronos time may be measured in minutes. Each day, you and I are giving one thousand four hundred and forty minutes. Even every one of us is given the same amount of chronological time. But quality of life is measured in kairos moments. Discerning these moments is a part of hearing God's voice. And, and I believe, brothers and sisters, that many of us are missing opportunities that God has set aside for us because we're waiting for some chronological time to take place instead of hearing God's voice in the kairos moments that God affords us. Hearing him means picking up on those holy slices of time when you need to discern critical moments that God has given you to make decisions that will make change more than just a day, but just might change your lifetime. I had one yesterday, by the way. You see, Wednesdays and Thursdays are my heavy meeting days, and yesterday was no different. I had meetings lined up from 11 o'clock in the morning to 7 p.m. at night. But around 12, 12 noon or so, I felt a prompting of the Holy Spirit to cancel my 7 o'clock appointment, call my wife, invite her to dinner, and celebrate her recent promotion on her job. It was a Kairos moment. A moment that I didn't think about, but one that I believe I was sensitive enough to God's voice to, to be an outstanding, to, to make an outstanding Thursday night date night with my wife. I called her on the phone and I said, you know what? I have not, we have not gone out to celebrate your, your recent promotion. And so God, I, God's prompting was to, to cancel my seven o'clock chronological date and, and set aside a sensitive moment for God. Hear me now, husbands, that, that hear me now, um, um, to set aside this, sensitive time that that made a Thursday night date uh, just explode with joy. We laughed all night long because I didn't miss 
that Kairos moment. Could I have waited for the day? I could have waited because see Fridays are normally our, our date night. And I could have waited for a planned date for, for us. But I was sensitive, my brothers and sisters, to the prompting of God. And it made what could have been a regular date turn into an outstanding time. And many of you are missing out on these uh, sensitive times. Uh, um, you can do the same thing tomorrow that God is telling you today, and it just won't make the same difference. Did you get that? That you can, you can say, well, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow when God is prompting you to do it today. And you will miss out on uh, the explosion that comes as a result of you obeying and being sensitive to his voice on the time and season that God has set aside, has laid, has laid it right before you on a silver platter and says, do it now. And when you do it now, it brings about more than just you doing it when you get a time and when you get when you get a season, when you feel like doing it. When you do things that God has called you to do right then and there, you 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 bring I, I call it you turn addition into multiplication. Yeah, I discovered my brothers and sisters that I don't always catch Kairos moments. I, I don't know about you, but I don't always catch Kairos moments. Sometimes I let fear dictate my decisions. On occasion, I'm, I'm afraid of what people may say or feeling awkward or looking foolish. So I fail to step out on faith. Sometimes I'm too preoccupied in my own problems, in my own circumstances to discern God's promptings. But listening to the whispers and obeying God's promptings can turn an ordinary day, check this out, hear me now, into an adventure of a lifetime. See, I discovered that life turns on a dime and, and a dime is the decisions that change the direct the trajectory of my life forever. Trust is, I mean, truth is re not relative. Truth isn't relative. Truth is the same every single day. But time is. With God, a thousand years, the scripture says, is like one day. With us, sometimes a day is that is filled with God's spirit can feel like a thousand years. That, that when you don't operate in God's spirit, the, a, a day just goes another day. It's just another day. It's just another day. It's just another day. You wake up just automatically assuming that the day is going to be the same as yesterday. But, but if you're sensitive to God's voice, you'll pick up on things today that you might have missed yesterday. You got it? And that God will explode something in your life because you picked up on uh, uh, picking up a phone call and saying, hey, um, I'm calling you today. And, and it wasn't on your plan. It wasn't on your schedule. But but you felt the spirit of God prompting you to do something today. One of my, one of my daughters, um, I was with her earlier this week and she said, um, you know how you say, you guys don't want to say the spirit of God told you, you'll say something told me, something told me to call somebody and they ended up talking on the phone or texting each other and they've set up something to, to that will change the trajectory of their lives. They had been going through a little, uh, little schism and little problems, but, but she, she, she was sensitive to a Kairos moment and now they're reconciling their relationship. See, I discovered that with us, a day is like a thousand years. Kairos moments happen when our rational uh, mind looks for the path of least resistance. It happens on Sunday. You you know it happens to you on Sunday mornings when you are not feeling well and you're and not feeling your greatest. And instead of getting up, getting dressed, driving to church, your Kronos mind says it's just easy to stay at home. And watch it on stream. You, you, you hear because you think that you are saving time. You're thinking that I, I will save time because I don't have to get dressed. I don't have to um, drive to church. And so you expect that just hearing the service and listening to the message gives you the same thing. Because you're chronos thinking. You hear the same thing. But you don't receive the same thing. You get the knowledge. But what you may miss is the encouragement. What you may miss is the strength or the, the, the breathing of the spirit, which can't take place while you're sitting at home. You cannot get a, 
a yoke breaking experience walking on chronological time. You have to be sensitive, brothers and sisters, to a Kairos moment. I, I, and I think that that's where some of you are missing out and you're you're kind of missing out on what God's best is for you. It's because you're missing out on Kairos moments. If you if you want to look at one, look at Acts chapter number four. Uh, I mean, Acts chapter number two, verse number one. These brothers and sisters had no reason to be in the same place on one accord, but they were there, the scripture says, they were in the same place on one accord, and the Holy Spirit came in and changed their lives. You see, my brothers and sisters, every day chronologically stays consistent, but truth, life's opportunities often happens at the speed of life. You have to listen to God's voice, and you have to move quickly to his promptings. And at the same time, when you're listening and you're doing what God has called you to do, you still have to then wait for the seed that God, that you're planting in the ground to take root and to bear fruit. See, I love, and Pastor Mark said it in his book as well, I love millennials. I really do. I love millennials. And I'm happy that my church is filled with young people, filled with millennials. I love their passion. I love their drive. I love their, their desire to make a difference. I love the way they think. But I am have a problem with millennials because millennials oftentimes are too impatient. They, 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 too often they want what their parents had in half the time for half the effort. But I, and I can almost guarantee that our hopes and dreams will take longer than what we normally expect. Here's the point. You and I give up too easily. We often get ahead of God instead of keeping step with the spirit or we fall behind because of our frustration. It's not easy discerning his timing with brain chronological power. It's harder even trusting in him. And, and I notice that people who are just staying in the chronological, they just do things like this every single day. Boom, 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 boom. It's time to do this. It's time to do this. It's time to do this. Instead of just like, okay, what is God saying? What is God saying? What is God saying that's going to create a moment that God ushers in? You know, here's the point. Don't fall behind God. And don't go ahead of God. Wait for his timing. His timing is not with your brain power. It's what you're hearing. It's with, it's with your spiritual ears. God is never late and he's never a dollar short, despite what we sometimes think. But if you're... But if you're questioning his timing, perhaps it is, brothers and sisters, it's your watch that needs to be adjusted. You get in his time, get in tune with his whisper. Here, here are some things I want to share with you. Um, a great biblical example is the divine timing um, and prompting make case um, uh, is in the, in, in the book of Esther. You remember book of Esther? The Bible says that Haman who was an arch enemy of Mordecai, had decided that he was going to hang Mordecai. And he erected this, this big, long gallows where he was going to hang Mordecai on it. But do you remember what happened as a result of Esther taking advantage of the Kairos moment? She went to the king even when the king's when she knew that, it, that the Bible says that she said, I can't go to the king but he had, because he has not called me. It's not a chronological time. It's not my time to go to the king. But she, she said, if I perish, I perish. I'm going to see the king. She started to think it's a Kairos moment. And you know what happened, that the, that the Bible says that Haman, who had erected the gallows to, to kill Mordecai, was actually killed on, that, on those same gallows. You see, God will turn things around, brothers and sisters, when you start to hear God and start to operate in God's Kairos moments. Here's a few observations that you need to take away with you this morning. First, God doesn't always reward, reward good deeds on the spot. Ooh, I need to receive that. God does not always reward what you do on the spot. Have you ever done something and seemingly went unnoticed? Frustrating, huh? But I've learned, my brothers and sisters, to trust God's timing. He doesn't always reward us right then and there. But I promise you, I promise you that he'll always reward faithfulness somehow, some way, every time. That, that you, if you always are faithful to the voice of God, 
It may not always seem like you're getting it what you want immediately. Your, your wife won't change immediately. Your husband won't change immediately. Your children won't change immediately. Your coworkers won't change immediately. But if you are faithful and you're hearing God's moments and listening to the promptings of God, he'll tell you to buy lunch for somebody. For somebody. And they may not even say thank you. But if you're faithful to God's promptings, God will always reward faithfulness somehow, some way. Every time. Secondly, have you ever woke up uh, in the middle of the night and you just couldn't sleep? You know, we call it insomnia. Somehow, brothers and sisters, you and I fight to try to go back to sleep. But I believe that sometimes when we are when we're faced with these uh, sleepless night, it is God's prompting for us to pray. That that may be God trying trying to speak to your heart about something he wants to do for you the next day. And when you when you are next in your situation where God wakes you up in the middle of the night, don't turn on the television. Don't open up your computer. Just get down on your knees and pray and listen to God and see if he not doesn't give you something that you don't even know you're going to need until the next morning. Lastly, God can accomplish more in one day than you and I can accomplish in a lifetime. I know that's right. Discerning the difference between coincidence and providence can be reduced to cannot be reduced to a mathematical formula. But God loves pulling off the impossible against all odds. He also loves using the least qualified to accomplish his plans and his purpose. My brothers, here's your lesson for today. Here's your assignment. Listen. Listen to God's promptings. Obey the seizing of it and watch addition turn into multiplication in every area of your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, for prompting us, for moving us in the direction of Kairos moments, moments that cannot be put on a calendar, that you will superimpose and expose the enemy and God, explode things in our lives based upon our listening to just still small voice prompting us to do things out of the ordinary. So God, I pray this morning, oh God, that our hearts and our minds will be open and sensitive to Kairos moments. God, every day, chronologically, things just happen, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. But God, you will set aside a day and say, this day is not, not like any other day. And you're, you'll prompt us to seize the opportunity. So God, I pray, God, that every opportunity that you've opened for us, that we would walk in it boldly, uh, without fear, without um, uh, reticence, without uh, a resistance of our holy, of our um, uh, chronological and our logical mind. But God, that we would be just sensitive to your spirit. Uh, God, I pray that you would open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open and, and let us be sensitive to the hearing of your word. God bless us today. Make us a blessing. Uh, make, your, make your way straight for us, God, because and simple because of our enemies. God, be with us and guide us and keep us is my prayer. Make your face to shine graciously upon your people and give us peace that surpasses all understanding that will keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We thank you uh, for your promptings and God, I, I pray that me, uh, that my brothers and sisters and I, that we won't miss them like we so often do. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Hey, everybody, have a wonderful day. Uh, if I don't talk to you guys this weekend, if you're not in DMV area, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you on next Monday. If you guys are, are ready, um, tomorrow, I mean, Sunday, we'll be together. Those of us in the, H, uh, in the DMV area, have a wonderful day. I love you like peanut butter on jelly, like uh, milk and honey. I love you like syrup on my pancakes. I love you. I love you. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. Bless the Lord. Seize the day. Love you. Bye-bye.